Hi. Today we're going to talk about this question. Um, if God is there, why can't we see Him? And what's the problem? Why doesn't He show Himself? Well, we're going to try to explain that today with this little chart. Now, over here you see we have lost sinners, and that's who we are. We're separated from God by this big chasm. God is on this side, we're on this side, because of this, this passage in the Bible. Here, I'll show it to you. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now what we got here in this chart is simply the verse drawn out in a little chart. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. So what we have is the idea that sin has brought death into the world. Now when God created man, there was no sin, there was no death. God created Adam and Eve with life, but he told them when they sinned, they would die and experience this separation. So, when they sinned, it changed everything, and now there's death in the world because of sin. Not only because of that sin, but my own sins. See, I have my own sin. So, the wages of my own sins, even, is death. Now, a wage is what I earn. Wages is something you earn. So when I do this thing, this is my work, my sin, I earn the wage and death is the payment that I get. And so in the Bible we have physical death, which is everyone can understand that. We all go to the grave and turn into dust, just like the scripture says we will. But there's also something in the Bible else other than physical death. So we have the physical death and there's also a spiritual death. Now let me show you what I mean by that. Spiritual death in the Bible is when we face God on Judgment Day. Let me show you a passage on this. The book of Revelation is when God showed the Apostle John the future. And so one of the things he showed him was this great judgment. Then I saw, John says, a great white throne and him who was seated on it. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne. The lake of fire is the second death. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Now, this idea that there's a second death is what I'm talking about. In this picture, we have the wages of sin is death, it's the physical death, but it's also this idea that there's a spiritual death, an eternal separation from God in this, whatever that is, that lawful place. And that means we're lost. That's why we're lost in the Bible, because we're separated from God. But the good news of the Bible is that God is a God of love. This is the good news in the Bible. Jesus said, I've come to seek and to save that which was lost. And God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. So God is interested in bringing these separated guys over to this side with him. But the question is, how does he do it? That's what the Bible is all about. How does God bring these lost people that can't see him, that are separated, over to this side forever to be with him? Here's how he does it. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, eternal life is the gift. It's huge. It's being with God forever. It's seeing God. It's eternal life in heaven, in paradise. But it's a gift. A gift is something that you don't earn. A gift is something that somebody else does all the work for, and they, they do all the energy, take care of the payment, and they give it to you freely. That's what a gift is. Because in this case, the gift is so big, nobody could ever pay for that with anything they do here in this life. Here we are in, in this temporal little life. No matter what we do, it's not going to pay for this. It's too costly. God paid for it. Now here's the point. How did God pay for this gift of eternal life? How did he do it? Here's how he did it. We have the Lord Jesus Christ coming down from heaven and paying for this gift with his own life. Now, he pays the death penalty so these guys don't have to pay it. That's how he does it. Now watch what he said here. I'm going to show you something Jesus said. 
he said this, talking about himself, or he calls himself the son of man, because he's also man, but he's also the son of God. He's two things. He's man and God. For even the son of man, he said, did not come to be served, but to serve. Isn't that his whole life? He didn't come having everybody wait on him. He was helping everybody else. And, he says, to give his life, talking about himself, to give his life as a ransom for many. Now, what is a ransom? A ransom is something that you pay and it frees the other people. In this case, he gives his life as a ransom and frees them from death. Now, watch what he does here. Okay, we're going to show some more passages on this. But the Bible says that God took the Father, God the Father took all my sins, use myself for example, and God the Father laid my sins upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Now here's all my sins, they're all, all my billions of ugliness that I ever did. It was all laid on Jesus when he died on the cross 2,000 years ago. And when that happened, he also took this death, all this problem of the wages of sin is death, and he also put that on Jesus as well. So Jesus carries my sin, and he takes the death penalty, he pays the death penalty, so I don't have to pay it. Now he can give me the gift of eternal life. Life instead of death, because he pays the death that I deserve with my wages. Now, let's see what the Bible says about this. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. We've all sinned in our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. God the Father, the Lord, has laid on him Christ the iniquity of us all. So he transferred our sins to him, and in that moment of time, what happened? He was pierced for our transgressions. See, he didn't have any transgressions. He didn't transgress any God's laws. He obeyed them perfectly. He was pierced for our sins. He was crushed for our iniquities, our sins. And watch this now. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. That death penalty was the punishment that was upon him. It brought us peace with God because he paid it. That's why by his wounds we're healed. You see, this is, this is how the Lord pays for this free gift by paying for the wages of sin that we earn and then we don't have to pay it. Then he can bring us back to life on Judgment Day and bring us over here to be with him forever. Jesus paid for the gift. Now, how do we get from this side to this side? God brings us, God the Father brings us from being lost all the way over here through the death of Christ brings us over here to be saved. And that's why we're happy when we're saved because we're saved from all this. Spiritual death, all, even the physical death because God brings us back and He re raises us from the dead on Judgment Day. So when somebody receives Jesus Christ as their Savior, Lord, you died for my sins, I believe in you, and I want you to be my Lord. I want you to take control of my life. I want to live for you. I want to be in your kingdom. I want you to be my king. I want to be your servant. I want to do things your way. I want to live the rest of my life in gratitude for what you did for me. That means Jesus is my Savior because he died for my sins, and he's my Lord because I want to live for him. When a person has this attitude, and he goes to the Lord, and he says, Lord, save me. I want you to be my Lord. I want you to be my Savior. I believe in your precious blood. I want you to, to bring me into your kingdom and be my king. God brings him from lost to saved, and he gives him eternal life right then. Then on Judgment Day, he doesn't have to pay for any of his sins. He's brought back to life. He has physical life, and he has eternal life in the kingdom of God. He can see God. Then we can see him face to face. This is the good news. That's why, you know, please uh, come over here, see, to our website, and you can see more good news. And I encourage you to receive the free gift by coming to the Lord Jesus Christ, trusting in Him, believing in Him, believing in His work on the cross, and accepting Him as your King. God bless you.